What is cost basis and how to calculate it when doing your crypto taxes? Welcome to Crypto Tax 101, brought to you by Binance Australia. I'm Liam from Crypto Tax Platform Coinly, and I'm here to make crypto tax a little bit simpler for Binance users in Australia. Cost base is a term often thrown around when it comes to tax, but what is it? In short, your cost basis is simply what fiat price your crypto was purchased at, plus any associated fees. Once you know this, you can easily calculate your capital gains or losses. Your cost basis becomes relevant when you dispose of any crypto holdings, the result being a capital gain or loss. This can be from selling it on an exchange to fiat, or trading or swapping your crypto for other tokens. This is why keeping records of all your transactions you've made during the year is important. For example, let's say you purchased one Bitcoin for $50,000. Just add the 0.1% trading fee of $50 and you'll get your cost basis of $50,050. Now it's later in the year and your Bitcoin is right for selling at $60,000. Again, just add the additional 0.1% trading fee associated with the sale to your cost basis. You'll then have $50,050 plus $50 for a total cost basis of $50,100. The capital gain is simply the sale price of $60,000 less your cost basis of $50,100. In this case, $9,900. This figure will then be taxed at your marginal tax rate to your income. There are also cost basis methods to consider too, which can significantly affect your capital gain or loss amounts. While investors can generally choose which method they want to use, We'll walk through the two most common versions, FIFO and LIFO. FIFO, which stands for first in, first out, reflects a methodology that the first asset you buy is the first asset you sell, while LIFO, last in, first out, will make use of the cost basis of the asset you purchased most recently. Let's use a scenario to see how the differing methods would play out. In July, Ray buys three BNB tokens for $300 each. In September, he buys an additional three BNB tokens at $200 each. In December, he decides to sell three BNB tokens for $400 each. Using the FIFO method, the purchase price of the first set of BNB tokens purchased will be used first, that is $300. Cost basis of the three tokens at $300 equals $900. The sale proceeds of the three tokens sold at $400 gives $1,200 for a capital gain of $1,200 minus $900 or $300. Using the LIFO method, the purchase price of the last set of BNB tokens will be used first, that is $200. So a cost basis of three tokens at $200 for $600. Sale proceeds of the three tokens at $400 for $1,200 and a capital gain of the $1,200 minus $600 for $600 overall. One thing to note is there can be instances where an asset is deemed to be acquired with a cost basis of zero. Current ATO guidance suggests this applies to both hard forks where a blockchain is branched and a new token is created, such as Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and initial allocation airdrops, where a cryptocurrency previously had no market value and was airdropped to users of a protocol. For example, Uniswap, Ape, optimism or look swear. As always, it's worth talking to an accountant or tax professional to help get the right outcome for you. Keep watching the Binance Australia video series, Crypto Tax 101, to learn more about how crypto is taxed in Australia. The next video will cover tax implications for spot trading crypto.